Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Hanging out in the grow room. Got the parrots out here with me. Just got home from the nursery, so let's do a plant haul. The parrots, they might be a little bit noisy. Hopefully it won't be too bad. So Maria Young from My Orchid Adventures, check her channel out here on YouTube. She did a video where she went through a, a absolutely gorgeous nursery. I've never seen a nursery that just looked as phenomenal as this one. I really, I'd like to go there. I want to move in and just, I just want to be amongst all those beautiful plants. She went to this nursery and it was the no budget plant haul challenge and then nominated me at the end of the video to partake, tagged me in, but there's one problem. And it's that where I live, the nurseries pretty much stop selling plants this time of year. It's like, the end of inventory time. And just a few days before she posted that video, went and bought like the ultimate plant that I wanted, which is a triangle palm. That would have been the first choice for me in this video. I had already gotten it though. And there were some rules. The rules were, what was it? We are actually doing the no budget plant version challenge. Okay, let me tell you exactly what that is all about. That means that I have absolutely no budget at all. I can get whatever plants I want. Now the setback is I only got three minutes and they all have to fit within these little arms of mine. Can we do it guys? I think we can. Here's, I didn't, I didn't follow the rules because the majority of plants that I want and need right now are terrarium plants. So I was like, you know, we can, we can go all out with terrarium plants. Don't worry, there's more to this. I got a bunch of other things too. So I went ahead over to uh, my favorite local nursery. That's a Greenscape Gardens. They have a great selection of house plants. They closed December 15th. I think they open back up March 1st. So kind of last dibs with a lot of the plants. They're gonna be open for a couple more days. I wouldn't be able to get out there then though. So I grabbed everything I could. <laughs> there was no arm situation. It was no, no. This is my last shot at picking up all these great terrarium plants for the winter time. I really like to do terrariums and things like that over winter, but they're just so hard to come by where I live. And when I find them, they're never labeled. Most of theirs were labeled, so I know what they are, so we can actually talk about them. And pretty much everything at the nursery was on sale too. So the pottery was all 50% off. So I picked up this nice, pretty bowl planter that I'm probably going to do some sort of arrangement with, maybe with some uh, orchids, something like that, we'll see. And then I got another pot that I will show you at the end of the video, because I forgot to bring it in here with me. But to get things started, I actually think it would be best to go through the bigger plants first. For starters, I picked up a couple of orchids. They weren't in these metal cups, I just put them in there to help them stay up there in those flimsy like rubbery latexy type pots that I'm not really a big fan of but the roots look pretty good on them a little crack there no big deal and I just I thought they were cute you want to see the flowers probably that's arguably one of the best parts of an orchid so these they're just assorted phalaenopsis orchids I don't know the variety but I just liked them a lot this one right here this like yellowy creamy colored one they had several of these and every single one of them had at least two spikes on them some of the spikes were branching and I was like okay that's the characteristic I like to see in a Phalaenopsis orchid that they had that kind of vigor to the flowers. So I grabbed one of those, it was 50% off. And then I grabbed this Phalaenopsis right here, which is pretty. Neither of these are anything I haven't seen before, but I just liked them. They were standing out to me. I really like the colors on these petals. And this one's kind of starting to lose some of its flowers, but it still has some buds on it. This one right here looks like it might dry out and come off. I'm not too terribly concerned about that. I just like knowing that it, they have these pretty flowers on them. I need to make sure to go ahead and get these labeled so that when the flowers come off, I'll remember what they are. Okay, and then from this point on, we'll go from like biggest to smallest. Look at this one. Lovely, beautiful pink anthurium. I actually have one other of these from a, uh, from the same nursery. Sorry, I got distracted. My bird just pooped from my humidifier. So that's the joy of having parrots. Had to make sure it doesn't like get into the tank or anything so nobody wants to sit out here and inhale and vaporize bird poop. Sorry, I know that's gross. Anyways, I have one of these actually from the same nursery that I got a few years ago and it has done very well. I doubt it's going to be able to come into camera here. Probably, yeah, see, it doesn't wanna, you can kind of see it, not really. So that one has grown a bunch. It has some new flower buds starting to 
come up out of the middle of it and I almost dropped my camera. Just focus on the one that's here in front of me. I don't know the variety name, it's just a really pretty hot pink anthurium. The other one I got from a few years ago has done wonderfully, so I'm really excited to have two of those now. It's just a sturdy anthurium. There's so many different flower forms on these, but this particular, this like beautiful hot pink, it's one of my favorites. So this is something that really stood out to me and I was like, I have to get this. All y'all other plant people, you know how it is when you've been doing this for a while, you walk into a nursery and it's like you have radar, like you can just kind of scan the place and everything you want sort of stands out at you. This is like one of the first things I saw when I walked into the nursery. I'm just happy to have another one. Not that the one isn't enough, but just why not have a second one, a backup. Maybe it's one I can divide and share and give away with people, but just those flowers. They're just absolutely beautiful. And they, as they fade, let me see, I think there's an older one on here. And the flowers still stay really pretty as they fade. They kind of go into this sort of burnt orangish red color with the green in them. So that's just, it's just the plant that makes me very happy. So vibrant and waxy and just so, it's just so pink and beautiful. And here's one of the other pots I picked up. It was just cute. I thought for the holidays, it would be a nice pot to have around the anthurium here is in a nursery container. Let's have that sitting in there for stability, but it's a decent sized pot. It's gold, it's reflective. I like the squiggles and the shine combined with the mat. I don't know, I just liked it. It's just a pot. Okay, here's the thing. Remember this, I just got back from the nursery like, I don't know, half an hour ago. So the state of the plants is just the state of the plants. It's not my fault. There's some crispy edges and things. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, it's a calathea, it's an orbitifolia, the ones with the really nice big broad foliage on them. The humidity out here is pretty decent, so I think that it should bounce back, should be all right. It is very dry though, so it needs a heavy soaking, obviously, a little bit of TLC. All of these were on sale. I think it was Tropicals were 50% off, I believe, and then uh, everything else was like buy to get one. Might've been buy to get one 50% off. There was, there was a lot going on. My brain was spinning with the terrarium plants trying to sort out what I had in my cart and what I didn't. So I just was like, hey, if there's no budget, then I'm not even gonna worry about it. And mostly because everything I was getting was really small though, right? And it's an orbitifolia. Really pretty calathea. These, when they get bigger, I think are absolutely stunning. They're nice when they're small too. Just look at the foliage on them. All about that foliage. Even though this is a little bit worn, this calathea has definitely seen better days, but it's still really pretty. It's almost like a painting. Speaking of which, move on to the next plant. I'm actually not sure what that segue was about, so I'm gonna, it's just, don't worry about it. Nothing says happy holidays like a teeny tiny little hot pink poinsettia. Poinsettia, poinsettia, how do you say it? It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? It's a little one and it actually has a variety name on it, which I'm not used to seeing with poinsettias. It says it is the Prinsettia, hot pink poinsettia. And it's just cute. I just liked it. There's not much more to it. I just thought it looked nice. It was only $3.99 too, so talk about a good deal. It's little. Adorable. The flowers are a little bit ragged, so I don't know if that's an age thing or if it's just the nature of this poinsettia. Doesn't matter. I like it either way. And that name, that's kind of cute. Prinsettia. Huh. Funny. I just realized I really need to speed things up. I have all the terrarium plants to go through still. So here, look. Calatheas, more Calatheas. These are the classic pinstripe, which are Ornatas, I believe. They're just nice Calatheas. I like these a lot. It's not unusual. I have plants that I've seen around at big box stores plenty of times. I don't know, they just stood out to me. And again, they're on sale. So I was like, why not? Because again, foliage, look at that foliage. It's just so pretty. Is the pink coming through? Cause sometimes my viewfinder isn't true to what I end up seeing when I'm editing. Right now, I don't really see the pink. Now I see the pink, but I don't, it, this will we'll all know what's going on during editing. As you see, really pretty pink stripes in the foliage. As far as Calatheas go, I feel like when I've grown this variety before, they're a little bit more sturdy. Nice, natural waxiness, waxy nature to their foliage. Yeah, I turned my exposure back up because I've realized that that might be a mess. Who doesn't love Calatheas? They're really nice house plants. And then I also grabbed this mounted staghorn fern, which is nice, pre-mounted. It's the uh, Platycerum uh, bifurcatum, I believe. Should excuse you. Cosmo, not right now, just screaming. 
They did a good job mounting it. I think it looks nice. Not that hard to do it yourself, but hey, when they're on sale, why not, right? It has a little wire hanger already on it. It's perfect. I'm going to take this and give it a soak and they need to go inside because they're screaming. They're making things hard to film out here. Okay, let's get to the terrarium plants. There's actually one other big plant in that pot, but we'll do that as soon as we get through these guys. The last plant's just kind of big, so I didn't really think it was going to fit in here. It needs to be potted up into something heavier that can hold its weight, because it just flops right over as soon as you stop touching it. So for now, it's just leaning against the plastic. <laughs> this is more than I was even able to fit into frame. It's a lot of little guys and an interesting conundrum that I just noticed, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly. There's a lot of little plants here. In the back, a lovely tricolor jade. Just a really pretty succulent. I already have a couple. I just, I tend to, just, I can't stop myself from buying those. So now I have like five of them. Probably didn't need to get that one, but there it is. Then there's a maiden hair fern right next to that one. A smaller maiden hair fern. You know, I did one of those in a terrarium last winter and it was pretty, but um, it got way too big, way too fast. Nice asplenium. This is, I think it's a crispy wave. Yeah, crispy wave. So it's a bird's nest fern that just, it has more ripples in the foliage. It's a pretty one. Not all these plants will be able to stay in a terrarium for too long. Some of them will outgrow them rather fast, but that's okay. There is a syngonium back here. The label for this one just said pink arrowheads. So I don't know the variety name. That's okay. I have plenty of them. So that's all right. And then an asparagus fern, which are great to have around for some texture. They give things a nice airiness and sort of a loose kind of cool vibe to a planter or a terrarium. Great for texture. And then ferns, there's a lot of ferns. And uh, some of them I think are mislabeled, which I didn't realize until just now. But back here, this one is labeled as a tricolor fern. It's a little bit thirsty, that's all right. We'll go ahead and give all these a nice drink as soon as the video's done. And uh, then uh, there are also a couple of, I have two of these that do not, come on. You see this button fern? It's what the label says anyways. Really cute, glossy foliage, a nice looking plant. I did grab two of those, uh, or maybe four. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then a nice cryptanthus with some pink variegation in it. One of my favorite plants for terrariums. I love cryptanthus. They're so easy to grow. I love the vibrant variegation they have, and they even have a decent amount of vigor to them, at least in a terrarium they do. Here is a ripple peperomia. It's cute, shiny, purpley, bluish gray foliage. It's cute foliage on it. Pretty undersides. They're nice and glossy. I mean, it's, it's a peperomia. Who doesn't love peperomias? Look, two more button ferns that look absolutely nothing like the other button ferns. That's interesting. Uh, that's okay. I don't know what kind of fern it is. I could make some guesses, but I'm not going to. So we'll just say it's a fern. How about that? I don't like giving names to ferns if they don't have labels. That's risky. There's so many different ferns out there. I also grabbed this guy that does not want to focus. I spent some time on it. I don't know what it is. Some type of sedum, spurge, something like that. I don't know. There's two of them. I think they'll fill out a terrarium nicely. It just kind of looks like a nice spreader. It has nice lush green foliage too. And I also grabbed this spike moss here. These are plants that I sometimes don't do great with. They'll grow really, really well. And then I like miss one watering and they just die. I'm thinking in a terrarium that hopefully won't be as much of an issue. So it'll be a little bit more balanced with their moisture. Oh, and then the last one, it's a philodendron moonlight. I thought it was a little fill and it was the only one they had. I, so I just grabbed it. This is why I like for things to have labels. And if you don't pay attention to the label, it doesn't really matter. I already have a philodendron moonlight and this is definitely going to outgrow a terrarium. But hey, that's okay. Things outgrow planters and terrariums. Just pull them out and swap them out with something else and move the big guys into a larger, more accommodating pot. Nothing I can't handle. Not a big deal, just part of it sometimes. You have to move things around with terrariums. Especially if you can't find things that are like actual true miniatures and dwarfs or just plants that in general stay small, that's okay. And the philodendron moonlight's a really pretty philodendron. Okay, hold on, what's the last thing? Need to clean this up. Yeah, it's the last pot. It's just a ball, the big white ball. I don't know, I just, I saw it and I was like, that's cool. I don't know for sure what I'm going to do with it. The issue I have with any planters that have a larger middle than top is that whatever you put in here, once that fills out completely, 
and you need to bump the plant up a size, it is a nightmare to remove the plant from the pot. Like you have to really tear and cut at the roots to get them out. I don't want to have to do that. So I may end up putting some sort of tube in the middle and sealing that down to the bottom so whatever goes in here will lift right out. Or maybe I'll just make sure to put something in there that can stay in there for a pretty long time. So even if our plants don't outgrow their planters, they still need to have their soil refreshed every few years. So again, me and the stupid ball planter, I have two others and I haven't put anything in them because I'm like, what, what am I gonna put in here? But I just keep buying them because I don't, I just, I like balls. Get your minds out of the gutters. Okay, and then the last thing is a prickly pear and a puntia, it didn't have a variety name on it, but it's very large and very pretty. I am super happy with it. And it, since it was on sale, it was really cheap. And it, like I mentioned, it needs to be potted up into something that can hold it upright. Right now, it's just leaning there against the plastic, which is okay for right now, but um, I'll find a heavier pot to at least set that in. This isn't a good time to repot in a puntia, so I'm just gonna find a way to hold it upright. I mostly wanted that just because my tortoise eats cactus, and uh, I do have another one but it's just it's kind of nice to have a bunch that i can pull those pads off and cut them up and feed them to them without like the plants ending up looking terrible because you're constantly pulling pads off of them it has a nice looking plant so i went ahead and grabbed it i am certainly stocked up now this will at least get me through a few weeks of projects i love the calathea i don't i've had these before and then someone's like oh i like that and i'm like here you go take it so i don't i need to just hold on to one. But there is one thing about them that I'm not a fan of, and it's that the, the or not a specifically, this Calathea, in my experience, sometimes kind of a mealy bug magnet. And I've been battling those little buttheads for a while. So uh, I will be keeping the Calathea probably in the house to stay away from the, ooh, or maybe I can, no. We're not gonna talk about that right now. Anyways, great haul, lots of plants. Thanks Maria for tagging me in. I had a great time even though it wasn't like kind of true to the nature of the challenge. In the springtime when the nurseries get stocked up, I will be doing this again. I'll have another go at it. I might be doing a potentially, hopefully maybe a buying trip down in South Florida this spring and that might be another good time to do this sort of thing. But for now, it was more just like, I kinda need to stack up on some things to do some other projects with plants that don't like to focus on camera. Get a ball to put my plants in, obviously, why not? It's just good times and good timing because I had to hit up the nursery and go get these plants anyways. So it, it was maybe got a little bit more than I would have. She's well worth it and I'm fine with it. I forgot I had this cactus guy over here. How creepy is that to have poking through the foliage at you? I also forgot I had this peperomia here. It's just another nice glossy shiny plant that obviously caught my eye immediately because you know, shiny. Lots and lots and lots of new plant goodies here. I'm gonna be busy and I can't wait. I'm excited to get planting and getting into the projects again. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, and I should tag someone else in on this challenge. The problem is everybody I know who's into the plants also lives in areas where there's just not much going on with the nurseries right now. So I'm just gonna, this is open to everybody. You go out, do the just your heart's desire, put no budget plant challenge. Um, obviously the no budget thing, that part is entirely, I think just for fun and up to you. I mean, it's a no budget challenge, but I still was like, okay, no, some of these things are expensive, don't buy it. So I didn't, it's just, you know. Go plant shopping and have a good time. How about that? As projects go on and I start to get things done with these, I'll have those posted up on my social media and I'll do videos, they'll be filmed, but all my social media is linked down below in the description of the video. And don't forget to do the whole YouTube thing, you know, like the video, I appreciate it. Subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Oh, and comment down below. Say hi, what are some of your favorites? What are some things you've been seeing around? Do you have specific terrarium plants that stand out to you that you prefer over others? Or just say hi. It doesn't have to be about plants. You can just like say hi, what's up? Hope everybody's doing well. I know I already said that, but I mean it. So I'll say it again. I am really into the Syngronium. That's got some nice foliage on it. Very pink and pretty. And then the over here with the point. So much color and foliage. On the staghorn, that would have been a better shot 
I have it hanging up. It is probably not going to stay right there specifically, but it's up there. The birds went inside, they wouldn't shut up. Okay, time to grow. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.